Welcome back to the Track Talk Season Review. Now it's time for the final leg of the Singapore Sprint Series. It was a battle between the best sprinters over the last couple of seasons in the 2016 edition of the Group 1 Lion City Cup. A race won four times by the champion Rocketman, Zach Spirit was trying to add his name to the honour roll for the second time after victory in 2014 and a narrow defeat in 2.15 behind War Affair. Kranji Sprint winner Emperor Max and Merline Trophy winner Spilato were both in with a chance of a $50,000 bonus if they could win a second race in the Sprint Series. They're racing in the Lion City Cup and away quickly. Emperor Max off the inside. Spilato's going to push forward with goalkeeper and Kiwi Kama slicing between them early on. Zach Spirit just drifting back a little. They were followed by super winner Wimbledon down on the inside, then Packerbell's Cannon and three lengths away to Gold Rutal. Off the back in the Lion City, 850 metres to go. Emperor Max showed the way. Spilato quickly up on the outside to his bridle. Two lengths then to Kiwi Kama, followed by goalkeeper. Zach Spirit travelling up strongly. They were followed by Wimbledon. Then came super winner Packerbell's Cannon and burnt off his gold retile. 500 metres to go at the top of the lane. Emperor Max does it well, led by a half length over Spilato. Next of all is Zach Spirit needing room. Outside of it is goalkeeper and also Kiwi Kama. Then Wimbledon super winner into the stretch they come. Emperor Max at the 300. Zach Spirit into the clear. Uh, Spilato down the outside is flat to the floorboards. It's Emperor Max. Zach Spirit at the 200. Emperor Max. Zach Spirit. Zach Spirit at the outside. Pokes his nose in front of Emperor Max. Zach Spirit gets a neck in front. Emperor Max tries to fight on, but another one in the Lion City for Zach Spirit. He makes it two and he draws away from Emperor Max. Oh, I've been very spoiled. I've had a lot of good days, but this is the best. For what he's been through and what the Wongs have done by allowing me to send him home and that sort of stuff, it's a, it's a great day and, and I'm just so proud of him and, and all the staff. He's a He's a lot of work and, and all the boys and, and everyone at, at the stable do a lot with him every day from, from Sugar his size to Tim to Sabri who rides him every day of the week except Gallops and oh no, it's a huge team effort and it's a, just a wonderful thrill. Having his second run this campaign after a lengthy break in Australia, the win capped a terrific training performance from an emotional Cliff Brown and rewarded the patience of the owners from Zach Stable. With the trip of a lifetime to Newmarket for the July Cup on the cards, sadly, Zach Spirit was again struck down with a bone chip in the same off four leg. Not only ending his international dreams, but also bringing an end to a stunning career. He was retired and returned to New Haven Park, where he was born and bred. In other sad news after the Lion City Cup, Emperor Max and Spilato both bled and would not race for the remainder of 2016. Things were hotting up for trainer Cliff Brown and his new star debt collector as he would take on a terrific lineup in the Group 1 Singapore Guineas in May. Mr Scorsese was expected to be ridden back in the Guineas after racing much closer at his previous effort. Debt collector would start the $16 favourite with Cliff Brown also saddling up Fitzroy and Magstock. Ready to go, debt collector the favourite. Gates are back and they're racing in the Guineas and away quickly Raffaello and also Con flight out wide. Magnum's going to be ridden right up there on the speed and infantry going forward with uh, Cyborg and Marine Treasure over on the inside. So there's a bit of speed on here. Infantry's gone up to the front. Magnum wearing him like a glove in the early stages went to second followed by Marine Treasure Cyborg. It gets to fourth followed by Raffaello Con flight electing not to go up on the speed is trapped out three and four wide followed by Fitzroy over on the rails. Next of all then is uh, P again followed by Nova Strike, Special Force, a fair way back with Magstock. Or oh, uh, Fitzroy got flattened there, came back in the path of Special Force. Mr. Scorsese badly checked. Debt Collector might have just missed that. He's over on the inside, and Little Big Man's back with the tail enders. Down the side, 800 metres to go, and Infantry shows the way a length and a half over Magnum in second position, then Cyborg, Marine Treasure. Up on the outside is Conflight as they come to the bend from Raffaello. Fitzroy over on the inside, then Nova Strike, followed by Pierre Ghent. Uh, Conflight, uh, rather at least a uh, little big man, well back as they turn in with Nova Strike. Deck Collector ridden for luck over near the inside of Mr. Scorsese, brought wide. Infantry is the leader. Magnum up on the outside, Cyborg begins to run on, followed by Fitzroy over on the inside. Deck Collector begins to launch spotting them about four or five. Infantry in front over Magnum down the outside. Deck Collector begins to charge home. It's Infantry in front over Magnum. Deck Collector is steaming down the outside. He's come from well back. Deck Collector charges up races away. It's payday. The Deck Collector scores by two. 
In an interference mud race run in wet conditions, it was Michael Rod and Debt Collector who produced an unparalleled turn of foot to land the premier race for three-year-olds and in doing so, handing Barry Stable the $50,000 bonus for claiming the final two legs of the series. With a three-year-old challenge over for another year, the attention turns to the four-year-olds and the road leading to the Emirates Singapore Derby later in the year. The first leg is the 1400 metres Stewards Cup. In an open race with many chances, the pace would play a major role in the result. Lim Stable's participation in Singapore racing was once again on the rise and they were starting to reap rewards and Lim's rally was amongst one of the leading hopes in the Stewards Cup. Also in the field, flying mayor Kiwi Kama, as well as Cliff Brown's Poseidon and the Takoka trained mayor Believe Yourself. And last of all is Titanium. Towards the top of the straight, 700 metres to go. Kiwi Kama trying to be given a breather here, but Bring Money Home moves up on her outside. They were followed by Spanish Bay, just nickered before the bend. Affleck's out very wide. Poseidon locked away over on the fence. From Majestic Moments, Believe Yourself, Storm Trips, Limbs Rally's a fair way back. Here I am, came to the outside with My Lucky Strike. And next of all is JF Express. Well into the straight now, 350 metres to go. Bring Money Home zoomed up on the outside of Kiwi. Kama, Affleck begins to run on then believe yourself, getting through his majestic moments with a powerful finish Titanium out under the arches majestic moments went up to the lead but Titanium swamped it out wide Titanium raced the lead and got away from them, my lucky strike runs a great race but Titanium's going to blow them away, wins by three For James Peters, a magic start to his training career Super performance, um, Harry gave him a great ride and he's a really classy horse on his day to the Queen Elizabeth II Cup and it was only a small field of nine that would battle out a race that had been promoted to Group 1 status at a lucrative half million dollars up for grabs. Keshwa was once again one of the leading hopes. Hugh Bowman had flown over to partner Fastnet Dragon who had nearly won an Emirates Singapore Derby on in 2015. Also in the field was Laughing Gravy who at his most recent outing had trounced a similar field. On that occasion he'd only carried 49 and a half kilos and many doubted he could lump 58 and win at Group 1 level. Glenn Boss would take the ride on Laughing Gravy. As they come down the side in the QE2 Cup, front runner, Order of the Sun, Laughing Gravy, quickly around the outside to eyeball him as they come to the final 650. Coptado's off the bit, one Ra begins to pick up some ground. Fast near Dragon tracking into it well, then Bourbon Goldman, Keshwa hard ridden but improving from Step It Up, who's been shuffled out of it. And back of the tail is Perfect P, 400 from the judge. Laughing Gravy shoots away in the QE2 Cup. Laughing Gravy's out by four. Four lengths, fast near Dragon chasing. Keshwa, Coptado, Perfect Pia down the outside. 200 metres to go and Laughing Gravy is a mile in front. Coptado battling on strongly. Fast near Dragon down the outside but Laughing Gravy a mile clear in the QE2 Cup. Laughing Gravy's going to bolt in for Brown and Boss. Laughing Gravy by three. And you've just won another Group 1. Congratulations. Yeah, that's probably the most important one though, you know, to be honest. Um, I think it's number... 89 in my career, but that's a very important one to me, to be honest. So, uh, you know, you come to Singapore and you start a new new life and a new base. So it's, um, you know, I've had a pretty good start, I must say, but um, very unfortunate for Michael. I think he was on this horse originally. And uh, due to injury, I feel sorry for Michael. I, I know he'd be watching, probably kicking the TV, but I'll buy him a beer. Coming off his first leg win in the Stewards' Cup, Titanium was reunited with Manuel Nunez, and he would start favourite in the Group 1 Patrons Bowl. Other leading lights included the consistent mayor Believe Yourself, Pat Shaw's Majestic Moments and David Cox, Well Done. Just dropping in behind them, Titanium's fairly handy is in the first half. They were followed by Newlands around the outside in the white silks from uh, and next of all is Well Done, then came Blue Danube. They were followed in turn by Majestic Moments, just getting back a little with Believe Yourself to its inside. Then Zippity Doodah and Fighting Warrior. About to draw from the back a bit over a thousand metres to go and Affleck shows the way. Affleck out by three parts of length over Bring Money Home. Up on the outside, Mighty Warrior. Next is Aries enjoying a lovely run and outside of it is Hero. I am. They were followed in turn by Time Odyssey down on the offence is well done. Then Newlands out three wide.
Next of all as they come towards the top of the straight is Blue Danube. He's on a slightly wide trip and Titanium is relatively handy, travelling well between horses. Then came Believe Yourself, a fair way back, zippity doo -dah, majestic moments and Fighting Warrior. They turn in, 450 metres to go and Affleck gives a great sight as they go to the 400 metres. Affleck out by two lengths over Mighty Warrior. Aries is down the outside, battling away strongly to bring money home. Well done over towards the fence from Believe Yourself. Majestic moments comes from a long way back. Titanium's dropped out of it, but Affleck, the Guineas winner from uh, last year, has raced away. It's Affleck clear of well done. Now Majestic Moments thunders down the outside. Affleck in front. Well done. And Majestic Moments coming up, but well done. Well done indeed. Boss wins for Cock. I'm very happy, you know. With only 20 horses in the stable, I still can win a group one, really. You know. Today, the best best day in the office. <laughs> this horse did a really big job though because at no stage in the race was he comfortable. He was getting bashed up the fence. He had to really work hard for room the whole race and it sort of, I thought, would definitely take its toll on him the last hundred and it probably did because I felt like, you know, that, that, that took a lot of energy in here because the whole race I was getting bashed up sort of all in different directions. So, like I said, he's got a lot of charisma. This horse got a lot of heart and that takes him a long way. After the win of Laughing Gravy in the QE2 Cup, it was now back-to-back -back Group 1 victories for Glenn Boss, as the three-time Melbourne Cup winning jockey was starting to flex his muscle since arriving in Singapore in late March. A second Group 1 for David Cock and plenty of questions for Well Done's opposition, with David Cock emphasising that the derby is the ultimate goal. Well, it's time to take a break on the Track Talk Season Review. After the break, we'll have a look at the first of our features for the two-year-olds.